All right. Hi, this is Liza Graves with Style Blueprint, and I'm here with Michael Burcham. Michael, tell us a little bit about your background real quick so everyone can realize um, uh, where you're speaking from. Sure. Uh, I'm a healthcare entrepreneur here in Nashville, Tennessee. I've scaled and sold three healthcare companies. I started our Nashville Entrepreneur Center. I'm a member of Entrepreneurs Organization, and I teach at Vanderbilt University. Okay. So you are an expert, and we are going to rely on that right now. There is... Um, who will be watching this interview are a lot of small business owners, as well as people who work for small businesses, because we are all in this together fighting for small business right now. And there's a lot of um, legislation being fast tracked. So we're going to start with what was passed about 48 hours ago. Is that right? Um, the uh, Families First Act. Right. So can you break down for us in layman's terms, uh, how this affects business and how it specifically affects business with less than 50 people, because there's a lot of information out there that actually is for 500 and, and fewer, but there's a huge amount of business that's 50 and fewer and is highly confused right now. Sure. So um, this act was designed to be all encompassing of 500 and fewer when it was created. Um, but it's referencing two or three other acts, such as Family Medical Leave Act, FMLA, and a few others that had exemptions for under 50. Okay. Uh, that's why the conflicting information is out there, is that Congress specifically worded uh, this particular um, act, the Families First Coronavirus Relief Act, as it's called, and the language put in was 500 or less but it references other legislation that excludes very small employers. Now it has created a massive amount of noise in the last two days because I think legislators on both sides of the political sphere understand that there are much riskier games here for 50 and less employees than there are even in the 50 to 500. Yeah. Uh, so um, even as uh, late as today's Wall Street Journal, um, uh, Mnuchin, who is uh, really helping as well as the Department of Labor on this, had an article relating to the fact that um, it is likely that if a, an employer of less than 50 employees, this puts them in some hardship to try to comply, that they'd be exempt from it. Uh, the Department of Labor is likely going to comment on that Monday or Tuesday. Um, Mnuchin also indicated in today's uh, material that um, employers who had to do this could either draw on taxes they've already paid uh, or they could even get an advance on future taxes and um, if they haven't paid enough in yet. So they're looking at all the ways to help. I think um, you've heard the adage, no good deed goes unpunished. And I think the, the, in the haste to do this, there was broad belief that, yeah, we wanna do this for everybody but realizing it might create some hardship for very small employers. So now I think they're walking that back a little bit. Um, we will have in this coming week an enormous amount of clarity. Now, you know, it's, and it's, it's, it's sort of, uh, you got to individually try this on because I know small employers who actually want to participate in this, help their employees in some way, and would like the opportunity to get, uh, to participate in Families First so that they get credit for the work they do. But there are other small employers, like uh, some of my favorite restaurants here in town, that if they were forced to comply, would simply put them into bankruptcy. So I, I think everybody's being really sensitive to that, and we're going to expect to see some clarifying information about that coming up this week. Uh, it was put together in 48 hours, and so just as anything put together in 40 hours, even if you and I did something, it would have a few holes in it. Absolutely. And, and I think that's where... Um, as long as they can look at themselves and say, okay, we, we have to go back and repair some of this. And, and all of us on the front lines of small business can say, okay, give them grace. They tried to do something good, but let's make sure that they realize how this is going to burden. Then let's trust that they're going to fill those holes. And, and, and uh, both the Department of Labor and a number of the uh, folks in Congress who've worked on this said, we clearly do not want to jeopardize viability of any small business. So I expect we will see an opportunity for exemptions of 50 or less. Okay. Okay. That, 
which is, which is great because obviously if, if anyone's listening to this and they say, well, but that's terrible on the employee. Well, it's not terrible on the employee if uh, providing that actually puts the employer out of business. Yeah, then there's no job to come back to. There's no job to come back to. And, and those are the businesses we're talking about. Here. I, I mean, the, the, the long game here, while there is certainly short-term pain, the long game here is let's try to keep these businesses viable so that when this is over, there's actually jobs to go back to. Um, if we put too much on a small business and we force the company out of business, our country's backbone is the small business. Uh, and that'll hurt even more in the long run if we can't keep small businesses viable. Yeah. All right. So my next question is, there, there are a lot of businesses that are going to have to let people go. Yeah. Um, and they're considering whether to let them go or to furlough them. Yeah. And with those decisions, uh, there, uh, some, some businesses cannot provide health care for their employees, but some do. And so that's weighing on uh, small business owners' minds is if I let someone go, can I still pay for their health insurance? Um, what does that look like? Does that mean I need to furlough them? And I know that you're not an attorney and that this is all new, but what is your understanding of how a business owner should navigate uh, that conundrum that they're in right now? Okay, so let's, let's use the scenario that an employer uh, cannot pay wages, but okay. wants to keep health care. Um, the general consensus is the best way to do that is to furlough someone. Um, I have, I've sought legal counsel myself on this. Now, everyone should seek their own, but the best advice I've gotten is that, uh, that if you use the term furlough, you, you are able to retain and keep providing uh, your portion of health insurance to the employee, and the employee should be eligible also to collect unemployment. Um, generally speaking, if you're not, if you're on furlough and you're not working for a week or more, um, you're, you're basically laid off. <laughs> it's, this is a nice term. Um, I know. Uh, and it's an attempt by some employers to try to help cushion their employee and offer health insurance of some type. You know, I would encourage everyone, uh, everyone either has a benefit broker or a PEO through which they're getting their benefits. That's probably the fastest way to get an immediate answer on how to do that. All of those organizations um, have that information available on how they define these things. Every state is looking to relax these regulations as much as possible to provide maximum benefit to people during this crisis time. And both of those would be really good uh, uh, opportunities to get more data. Uh, a temporary layoff is another term some folks are using. That means that it's lasting six months or less. And so I've seen that term being used as well instead of termination as a temporary layoff, um, whereby you know, uh, you're expecting somebody's going to come back because your business is going to be viable. It's just going to be more than a few weeks and hopefully less than six months. Okay. So if you use the term temporary layoff with an employee, are they still eligible for unemployment? Yes. And with unemployment, where unemployment can pay sometimes up to 60% of their gross wages, but I also saw that in Tennessee, where you and I both are, that that is also maxed out at $275 a week. So that's only $14,000 a year. So that's... That's right. That's... Wow. Yeah. So every state has its own unemployment program. Uh, it is run in conjunction with the federal government. So what you just quoted is absolutely correct for Tennessee, but would not necessarily be correct for any of our neighboring states or any other Southern states where you have readers and followers. Um, I would encourage everyone to look at their own uh, state government website and look at unemployment benefits. Most of them have a calculator there uh, and I'll send you some data you can share with your readers on where they can get a calculator for their own. Um, but for the most part, like in Tennessee, the minimum is $30 a week, the maximum is 275, so it's a, it's a tiny amount of money. Now, uh, under the uh, program that we just discussed earlier, uh, the Families First Coronavirus Act, it's right. two weeks of sick time and then up to 10 weeks of FMLA, and the amounts on that are, are slightly larger. Uh, I don't know if you had the chance to, to get a, a, a look at, at some of those, but uh, it's capped at a maximum for the FMLA at $200 a day for a total payment of 
of 10,000, which may be better for some in some states. So I think it's worth taking a look at each of these and then make an informed decision of what makes the most sense. So, and, and with that, with the FMLA and being, mac being capped at $200 a day up to $10,000, is there government um, subsidy for that, for a business to give that to their employee right now? Uh, if, if you're using the, uh, the uh, FMLA that, as described in the Families First Coronavirus Act, um, it has three parts. It has a payment for testing, which we haven't discussed yet, paid FMLA, and paid sick leave for individuals. Um, and each of those has a slightly different uh, calculation for it. So for instance, emergency paid sick leave, uh, that's up for two weeks, and that's uh, 511 a day, which is even more than you could get in unemployment. So under the Families First Act, the first two weeks could be emergency paid sick, is, which is 511, which is almost twice what you could get in unemployment in Tennessee. Okay, and those are eligible for reimbursement. Those are eligible. Okay, so um, do we know right now how, as a small business, you could, so based, what I'm hearing, tell me if I'm wrong, is if you're trying to see as a business owner, crap, you know, give me two weeks where I can pay my people and have a job for them and I don't have to let them go, um, we can lean on this. Uh, Family Medical Leave Act, and I can get reimbursed for this. As a small business owner, who do I turn to? Um, well, let's first back up a bit. There's, okay. there's criteria. You have to be under state, federal, or local quarantine to be eligible. Uh, you've been, you have to be self-quarantined because your healthcare provider recommended it. You have the symptoms and you're awaiting a diagnosis you're caring for a child at home because their school is closed, which is us, of course, uh, right. as well. Uh, you're caring for someone who has been tested positive for coronavirus. Um, so that pretty much covers everybody, but I just- <laughs> I was about to say, I think that's pretty much everyone right now. <laughs> yeah, but there are criteria, and I just didn't want everybody to say, well, hell, you know, I, I've yeah. got to close, because there are some states that, you know, they have not asked people to close, and some schools are still open, so it's not- right absolutely everywhere, but certainly in Tennessee, you qualify on at least four or five of the six points, um, okay? The, the uh, paid sick leave uh, is uh, the first two weeks of the, uh, of the act, and then there's 10 weeks of FMLA that someone's eligible for. Now, that's a, a lower amount uh, than the sick leave. The sick leave uh, provides opportunity for up to 511. Uh, the extended FMLA is only 200. Um, right. But that's a lot better than unemployment. Yeah, could be. So uh, now, if you're going to take advantage of the Families First Act, you have to do it by April 2nd as an employer. You have two weeks from the day it was passed. If you're okay. not taking advantage of it by April 2nd, then you've chosen not to participate in some way, okay? Okay. So that's something everyone should take a look at too. Uh, there's some good summary documents on the web about it, but employers have two weeks to make a call if they're going to be part of that or not. And I think that's mostly targeted to the very smallest employers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this weekend is a big weekend in DC. There right. is um, some possible legislation going through. And I know when I've turned on the news, which is a little overwhelming, um, it's talking about the entire um, relief package that's going through the two, you know, at this point, it sounds like over $2 trillion. That's but right. one part of that is about keeping employees employed. Okay. And with, with that part of it, do you have any thoughts about what small business employees and employers should be doing this weekend in order to get the relief that they're talking about in DC? So the relief they're speaking about is a very big document. It's called the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. And you're right, it's somewhere between one and a half and two trillion at this point. Um, there is a really good set of uh, bullet points for small business. Uh, that The section of that particular legislation that applies to small business is called Division A. And under Division A, there's probably 12 to 20 bullets that apply to small business, including loan forgiveness if you do loans. Um, the SBA, yeah, the SBA put out information this past week. I don't know if your readers have looked at it or not, but the SBA, SBA has an emergency 
uh, disaster loan assistance program. Uh, it's right on the SBA website. Uh, we can provide the links to your readers after that the interview. Okay. Uh, but you can apply online and it's up to $2 million. Uh, part of this uh, discussion this weekend going on in Congress is uh, some forgiveness of those loans depending on the length this particular uh, business shutdown uh, goes. So it's a very important piece of legislation. Every, I, I strongly recommend every small business look at the Division A pieces. That's fairly readable and easy. Uh, we can provide the bullet points to your readers after the interview if you want. And if there's things there that they feel they need to weigh in on, they should absolutely contract uh, their congressman and talk about it because this is the work of the Congress next week. And it's gonna be a very important piece of work for all of us to get back to work over the coming months. And so I'd encourage your readers to absolutely know what's in Division A. That's the small business section. And, and we have just about two more minutes, but what I'm understanding from what is in Division A is broad scope here. It's whether the government wants to pay for people to be unemployed and with all these other things going on that they're, they can enact, or do they want to pay for people to remain employed? That's right. You got it. And, and it's defining the window of time. Uh, the draft legislation runs from March 1 of this year to December 31 of this year. Um, it sets the standards around all employers being able to access the same, whether uh, if they have less than 500 employees in, in this Division A, how loans would be provided, how loans might be forgiven, uh, eligibility, uh, all those things. So I'd encourage folks to take a look at it. The all loan right? forgiveness is a huge thing because yeah. it's, it's one thing to say, please keep your people employed and we'll give you a loan. And as a small business, you're like, I can't afford to even pay that loan back. Right. So do you want to... So I should, you know, it's, well, thank you so much. What we're going to do, we will um, get this uploaded to YouTube within a couple hours. And I would love to provide some of those URLs that you were talking about that have some summaries. That would be amazing. I'll make sure you have them, Liza. And thanks for the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you. All right, Michael Burcham, thank you so much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.